Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. Well, here you go. This is going to be all of the live foods that I culture and all the steps I go through to keep them healthy and active and teeming with life like this one here. Uh, this is the newest cultures that I've been uh, working on. Uh, these are cultures of uh, Daphnia, uh, seed shrimp, and cyclopsis. And ever since the spring, I have been trying to settle on a media, uh, settle on uh, the processes for trying to keep them uh, alive, active, healthy, and of course have enough of a population uh, that I can harvest and feed to my fish. And of course, uh, on top of all that, a process that doesn't stink up the entire fish room, <laughs> which is kind of important. Uh, I finally settled on that. Uh, I've tried a great many different things as you've seen in my videos uh, over the last couple of months. And this is the process I go through now. This is the one that actually works. I culture them on hay, and that's it. That's the only thing I feed to them. And what I do, this process here that you see here, I don't do very often. This is only when I want to increase the number of cultures I have. Uh, and if, of course, if I end up with a culture that's a dud, that does happen. That's why I culture uh, a great many of them like this. But for the most part, if I have, as you can see here, six or seven cultures, uh, there will only be maybe one out of those that isn't thriving and what i'll do is i will dump that one and then uh, as i dumped one out and there's one more bottle so i'm going to increase the number of bottles i have of this up to seven and I, my goal is to eventually get to ten it shouldn't take too long they actually thrive quite well now so what i do uh, and this one i'm doing this part here is i as you can see combine all of the cultures so that they're all uh, the population is stirred up as much as possible and then what i do is remove a fair amount of the hay that is the old hay uh, because if it gets to be too much in there uh, you end up with a bit of stagnation near the bottom and then of course that leads to uh, various compounds of sulfur which uh, stink uh, quite a bit so i want to make sure they stay aerobic and what I do then, of course, is add a little bit of fresh hay because the fresh hay is the one that uh, will decompose the best and feed the bacteria, which feeds everybody else. So I stir it all up like this, and then I just pour it back into the bottles. And I leave, as you can see here, a fair amount uh, near the top because what I normally do when I'm not expanding the cultures is I will add a little bit of hay from time to time to a new culture, uh, add some fresh water as well, and then of course as I harvest from these, I'll be pouring water out. And the nice thing, if you if these are stable, if they're not uh, like getting stinky, uh, you can just pour this water right into the aquarium. Uh, you don't have to worry about filtering it or anything, and it is a great source of food for your fish. So there you go. Uh, that last little bit that's left there, I will just uh, pour into one of my aquariums and the fish will be happy with that. I'll net out the uh, bits of hay, but other than that, uh, that is perfectly fine to feed to the fish. Now I'm going to put covers on these temporarily, but I'm not quite done with these yet. Because one other way of feeding them is as I move on to the second thing of culture, which is uh, this. these are cultures of paramecia and a bit of cyclopsis as well. So two of them are a bit of a dud, uh, so I rinse them out, clean them, and put fresh, uh, believe it or not, I just use aquarium water. And now what I will do is I will con uh, consolidate them all into the same thing, exactly the same as before. And then uh, I'll add those two fresh bottles. And then what I'll do again is put a bit of that old hay back in, and then a few sprigs of the new hay. And then uh, this whole process will just keep on continuing that way. Now you'll notice at the end of this, uh, these particular jars, I will leave actually a fair amount of extra room near the top because these ones I will top up with uh, water more frequently and bits of hay because I feed these into the other ones as well. Because the paramecia are great food for uh, the cyclopses and, and mostly I should say for uh, the seed shrimps and the, the daphnia. So that's actually another uh, really great way of keeping those cultures thriving really well. So that's the two uh, main differences on this new stuff that I take care of. And yeah, I just feed them hay and that's it. And the key to it is not to add too much. Uh, some of the early attempts at this, I had way too much in there. And yeah, it does smell quite badly. And the other thing is, if it gets too anaerobic near the bottom, uh, the whole culture just dies off. So it is uh, fr uh, fruitless to try and uh, get that to be any more active than what you see here already. 
So what I'm gonna do now after this, uh, I'm gonna get up to about 10 of these, and then my next step is to move them up to a full aquarium size. So I'm gonna have these cultures, uh, I'm, gonna have, like, I'm gonna dedicate a 15 gallon tank to this uh, with hay, a filtration system, and I am going to try and uh, have a large scale version. Uh, try and have one of these cultures well filtered and um, producing hopefully a little bit more that way, but we'll see how that goes. I'm definitely going to have uh, have it so that it is a, a dedicated fil uh, system. I'm not going to have anything in it like scuds that I have done that before, and I don't seem to. Th uh, it doesn't seem to work well if I have uh, too many different sp of species in here. So is this going to be a straight culture of the last one? Like this one here. These are just the the cyclops, uh, the um, sea shrimp and daphnia. So that's what it's going to be. And I'm going to feed it on hay and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to go on to uh, cultures that are ones that I've done for a long time. <laughs> this is obviously uh, vinegar eels and you can see it's just simply teeming. And if you remember from about a month and a half ago, I had taken half my cultures and reset them completely. Uh, those are the ones I just showed you because as you can see here, uh, these are over two and a half, three years old. They still have vinegar, easel, vinegar eels in them. Uh, vinegar eels are probably the easiest thing as a live food culture. If you treat them properly, uh, they'll last forever. You don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, these ones here, like I said, they're about two and a half years old, a little bit more maybe. Uh, they're, they get to the point where they don't smell right to me anymore, and they don't thrive. So what I'm going to do is... The new ones that I had just reset, I am going to use them to uh, reset all the other ones. So I'm going to have, again, a full dozen of new cultures. In about three to four weeks, uh, I'll be able to harvest again from these. And I have so much uh, live food in the fish room at the moment that uh, missing out on the vinegar eels for a few weeks won't make any difference at all. I am not currently breeding a whole lot of fish. Uh, most of the ones I'm breeding are like uh, guppies and a few other larger fish. So it's not really a big issue uh, having not having the vinegar eels. So uh, this is the perfect time for me to do this. I actually, the <laughs> thing I notice is I don't have any uh, apples in the house at the moment. So I am dividing up what I do have into these and again, I'm going to leave a fair amount of, of volume near the top of this. And what I'll do in about two weeks is uh, cut up some apples, uh, toss one in each of these, and then top them up with fresh uh, mixture of uh, apple cider vinegar, 50-50 uh, with water. And that's all that goes into this. And I think from now on, my plan is uh, to reset these every year. It is... 10 minutes of your life <laughs> to redo all these. Uh, not a big deal. And I find, even though it is only a small addition to uh, an order in the fish room, uh, it is enough that these things kind of accumulate and it's just better to keep it nice. And I mean, this smells like vinegar this way. So that is the way I'm going to do it from now on. Uh, just so, well, first off, I always have teeming cultures. Uh, it was nice to let it go longer just to see uh, if it made a difference, and it does. Obviously, most people won't culture anywhere near the amount that I culture. I like to raise a lot of fish, and I like to raise them on a great variety of different things, and this way I end up with as many different types as possible for them to feed. These two cultures uh, started off as green water cultures, and they still are. Uh, but mostly what they are now is scud cultures, and there's it's just teeming in there with them. Uh, it's kind of hard, unfortunately, to see them. Uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. It's very easy to feed them, and believe it or not, I have started feeding them on uh, hay as well as I feed them every morning with uh, flake food. Now, I have actually changed how I culture microworms yet again, believe it or not. Uh, what I'm doing now, uh, so I'm sticking with oatmeal, by the way. All the other versions uh, don't produce enough for me, and I've noticed under the microscope they tend to be smaller, and also they don't, um, they sometimes seem like they have a kink in them, like they're deformed. So what I do now for this is, uh, as I get a little bit more runny, I uh, stir them up, and I take a few spoons out, put them into a fresh container, uh, and then I add oatmeal to that and uh, move them around a little bit and uh, I add yeast to the top of it. And then every now and then if it looks like it's getting a little gray on top, I just discard a whole one and keep that process going like that. And the last thing I culture uh, is 
uh, cherry shrimp. And I don't do anything for these. I leave them in with the plecos and they just feed off whatever's left over. And uh, they thrive in here. And every now and then I scoop a net full out and dump them into my aquariums with that bigger fish. And uh, they really love that. So there you go. That is everything I do for cultures. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me ramble on. Uh, leave comments below if there's anything uh, that you culture or like to see. I do want to get on to trying some black worms, but I haven't found any yet. So like I said, leave comments, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.